Hi, today we are going to see how to deploy Spring Boot application to Heroku. If you have never heard about Heroku, Heroku is a platform as a service. So it's a place where you can host your application, but you don't really need to deal too much with the infrastructure stuff. So the idea is that you just have your application, you say that you want to deploy it to Heroku, you decide how many instances you want to have on Heroku, and Heroku as a platform will do the rest for you. So it's something that it's definitely easier to start with than any of the big free clouds, AWS, Google or Azure. What is really cool about Heroku is that it has a free plan. So you can really just create your account without even putting your credit card out there and you will be able to use the free tier, which means that there will be one instance where you can deploy your application and you can also use any of the free tier uh, enabled, let's say, marketplace add-ons. What are the marketplace add-ons? These are the kind of like a services that you can plug into your Heroku application, for example, databases, cache systems, monitorings, loggings, and so on. Before you can start working with Heroku, of course, you have to sign up there, and it's also good to install Heroku CLI. Okay, so we will do two things here. One is we will just deploy like the extremely simple application, just exposing some HTTP endpoint. And, but later on, we will also attach a Postgres database. And you will see how this whole process looks like of, of setting up the Heroku application, setting up database there, and how to plug in your Spring Boot application to it. Okay, so after you sign up to Heroku, you should see a dashboard that looks pretty much like that. It's also a good idea to install Heroku CLI. You don't necessarily need to use it. You can also use a Maven plugin, but I find Heroku CLI really, really good and really, really handy. So let's check if it works properly. Uh, if you type Heroku dash dash help, there should be at least some output. So now we can see the list of all the commands. And what I will do, I will just create a like very, very simple Spring Boot application for first, deploy it, see that the HTTP endpoint actually works. And later on, we will add a database support. So we will create like an extremely simple Spring Data JPA application and connect it to Postgres that is also hosted on Heroku. I already generated the simplest Spring Boot application with Spring MVC. There is just a one starter here, Spring Boot Starter Web. As you can see in this POM XML, there is nothing, nothing really fancy here. I didn't change anything else. The only change that I did is I added a hello controller that just returns a string hello world, and we can make sure that it works as expected. I will hit localhost 8080, and we see the hello world. No surprise here. But what we want to do now is we want to deploy it to Heroku and you will see how easy it is and how nice Heroku is to work with. Okay, so let's go back to a CLI. I am now in the root directory of my project and the thing that I do is I type Heroku create and this command will create a new application on Heroku. It will assign an external uh, URL and also create a Git repository. If I go back now to the browser and I refresh the page, I should see this application already here. Heroku by default assigns a pretty weird names, but fortunately we can modify it. So we don't want to hit and cough. Let's say that we want to have this application named as Heroku boot. Uh, could be that it's available. So I type in console Heroku apps, rename dash dash app, and then I have to put the old name, which is Hidden Cove, and I will call it Heroku Boot. So this gives us a new endpoint and also a new Git URL. How to deploy now this application to Heroku? Because if we hit this endpoint at this stage, we should get Git like 404 or or the default application uh, deployed to Heroku. This is definitely not our Spring Boot application. So Heroku works in a way that it gives you the Git repository. And once you push to this Git repository, every time you push a new commit, then it will redeploy the application automatically. So let's turn this project into a Git repository. And we also need to add this as a 
remote. And now if I push to Heroku, we will see something interesting happening. So first is the pushing to Git that we already know, but now we can already see that Heroku is building the application using Maven. So even though I never specified anywhere that this application is a Java app, it's a, it uses Maven, Heroku automatically detects that it's a Java app and it knows what to do with it. Okay, so now if I go back to the browser and refresh the page, we should see our hello world endpoint in action running on Heroku. It takes a while. Okay, now it works because the application was still probably being deployed. And here is another interesting thing. When you run a Spring Boot application or actually like every app, any application, you need to specify the port it should bind to. And of course, by default, Spring Boot runs on 8080, but our instance on Heroku does not necessarily will run on 8080. And usually in case when we deploy it somewhere, we need to specify what port it should run on. But Heroku is smart enough to detect that it's not only a Java application, but it's also a Spring Boot application. So what it does, it configures for us the so-called proc file where it states how the application should run. I'm not sure where is it at this stage. Oh, here it is. So here we will see what is the command that Heroku runs when it starts our application. It specifies the server port and then it does the java-jar to our jar file. And I haven't had to write any of these. What about some stuff like logging and metrics? So these are like two operational things that usually you want to have in an application. We don't need to SSH to this instance. Heroku comes with a command Heroku logs, and this will give us last bunch of logs from the from our instances. So we can see that these are like some of these are the logs coming from our Spring Boot application. Some of them come from the Heroku load balancer. We can also tail this log. It's I think dash dash t or dash t. So now if I hit this endpoint, we should see something coming up here. With metrics, it's unfortunately a little bit worse. So there is a metrics tab over here in the Heroku dashboard. Metrics are not available for free account. And even in the professional paid account, you get more or less the basic metrics about the operating system, the VM, uh, and also about the JVM, but there is no way to send custom metrics to the built-in metrics dashboard. If you want to use custom metrics like we are kind of used to, then you need to use one of the Heroku add-ons for example, Heroku add-on for Graphite that will come with both Graphite and Grafana, but it costs, I think, around $30, if I'm not mistaken, per month. Okay, so the next step is I would like to see how difficult or easy it will be to use a SQL database on Heroku. And Postgres is my go-to uh, SQL database, so I will just quickly go to our project and add Spring Data JPA starter and create an entity with some repository. I will speed it up because it's quite repetitive code. So let's now add another endpoint that will return all the greetings in the database. and save some greetings on application startup. Of course, if I try to deploy it now, it will, it will fail because it will try to connect to the database, but it has no clue where to connect and there is actually no database yet. So let's add the data database. I can do it either from a uh, command line. So Heroku has a, a subcommand called add-ons but it's not extremely easy to go through all these add-ons in the terminal. So I will do it from the 
browser. When I'm here uh, on my Heroku boot application in, in the Heroku dashboard, I can configure add-ons. And there is a bunch of different add-ons we can use from Redis to Metrics, Kafka. Some of them are coming from Heroku. Some of them are third party. The one we are interested in is Heroku Postgres. And it's also free to some degree. So if I click now install Heroku Postgres, it will ask me to which application I want to provision it to. And my application is called Heroku Boot. So once I provision the add-on, it is automatically installed. I can look into the details of this add-on where I can see the, the URL, password, username, and so on. And theoretically, uh, we should put these properties as environment properties. But since Heroku is smart enough to detect that this is a Spring Boot application, it sets all of the properties automatically for ourselves. So now if I just push the changes that we made, the application should be able automatically to pick up correct configuration for the database. So let's see if it actually works. So again, application is being compiled now and automatically deployed. So even though it said that it's deployed, I am pretty sure that application is still in the deployment phase. We can check it out by doing Heroku logs and tail the logs. So here we can see that the Hibernate context is going up. And for some reason it failed because the relation Hibernate sequence does not exist. That's true because I didn't create the tables. So let's make, let's make Hibernate created for us. So let's change the behavior for uh, DDA auto to create drop. It should create a database every time we uh, deploy an application, which for our test is totally fine. So let's do again, git add, git commit, git push. And let's tail the logs again. So the application is going up. And it says that application is started. Heroku has also another command that I find quite nice. It's Heroku open. It will open the default browser on the main page. So now if I hit slash greetings, we should hopefully see these two greetings. And yes, so in the end, without doing any extra configuration, except calling a couple of Heroku commands, we've got an application running on a compute instance. We have a database plugged in and that's it. But considering a little effort we had to do, I find it actually pretty awesome. Before we get too excited about the free tier, let's remember that it has some certain limitations. Heroku shuts down your instance after 30 minutes of inactivity. So it means that if there's, there are no requests coming in, the Heroku will just stop your application. When there is a new request coming afterwards, it will have to start it again. So probably the first request will take uh, around, I don't know, 20 seconds. It really depends what your application does and how long does it take to deploy it. Another limit that is also super, super important is that there is a limit, monthly limit, how, my, how many hours the instance can run. So it's not like it can run 24 seven, like I will link the details in the descriptions. But the good thing is that even if you upgrade to a paid plan, it's still not really expensive service. Considering how much effort would it be to set these things up on uh, other, let's say, cloud providers, definitely Heroku is something worth considering, especially if you are a solo developer, if it's your, just only your project, or if, or if you are a small team. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button down below. And if you want to more spring videos in your YouTube feed, consider subscribing. 
Thank you. <laughs>